hello everybody welcome to another episode of insights with c5 insights and we're excited i'm here today with patrick and Paige and myself malcolm from c5 insight and we're going to dive into the world of forecasting in the sales the d365 sales app and so this is something that i came across um, recently in a discussion with a customer we've obviously we've worked with forecasting in the past and stuff like that but we had i had a scenario recently where I had a customer who was compiling a lot of their forecast data manually. They had lots of spreadsheets, lots of napkins on their desk and doing all kinds of totaling and, and trying to figure out where they were going to end up at the end of the month and what they still needed to do and who needed to work on what. And we thought there's gotta be a better way than that. So we looked at a couple of different options and we, we went through what forecasting offers. And so I thought this would make a great topic of conversation for our session today because while there's some really great features, um, there was also some question marks that came up as we went through. So um, this here I've shared with you guys is just a trial, uh, just a, like a demo organization with a simple forecast that we've created. And I guess to start, um, one of the question marks that I had that perhaps you guys have some commentary on is the fact that while this is really great, I don't know that this gives us a whole lot more than what we already have access to just in a standard dashboard, you know, so your standard views and, and charts. Um, we can get a pipeline breakdown of, you know, what all our opportunities are and by stage, and we can drill down and get into that. And to me, this feels very much the same. I like the layout maybe a little bit better, but is it really worth all the effort to set it up? Because it does take some time to kind of get everything in place. So I don't know if you guys have looked at that or thought about that at any point, but what are your thoughts? Is it something you'd want to use? So in the in the past, we had another client who um, set it up um, actually on their own. And I was kind of in the same boat with you. I was kind of like, seems like a little aggressive, you know, to, to, to set it up. And um, it, is it really worth it? And they were they were ecstatic by the information that it provided for them. Um, so so you know the clients that have used it seem to really appreciate it and um, i think it does give more in-depth information in one place than a lot of the other mm -hmm. out of the box view charts and dashboards will give you right that's probably one of the big pieces and i think if you've got um folks who are coming from an excel based situation like your client did malcolm and they're used to using, say, spark lines and things like that for the little yeah. mini graphs inside of the cells, then maybe these little graphs that are tracking progress towards each of the um, phases of the pipeline here, that might speak to them because it's more comfortable space, easier more transition for user yeah. adoption. Yeah, yeah, that's a good call. I, I know too, one of the question marks that came up while we were looking at it, um, and Patrick, we were talking offline about it, that like, what about goals? Isn't this essentially what goals is going to give us too? But um, how did you phrase, I forget how you phrased it, something along the lines of goals were more. Yeah, I guess in some respects, goals are the traditional ones in the system are more current and backwards facing past looking at the past. Whereas with forecasting, I mean, it's right there in the in the word forecast, it's looking forward. Um, along with the current and the past at the same time. So maybe a bit more information, especially as you're trying to work towards that ideal um, situation with KPIs and sales of having that leading indicators instead of lagging. Right. So you, you capture that here where you may not necessarily get that in goals. Yeah, and, then, uh, and then with sales insights, you get additional functionality, right? Yeah, the predictive element, that's a huge part of it. That's a good call because we're not using that here. But that that whole predictive piece gives you the ability to say, hey, you're going to, I guess this kind of does it um, with that whole gap to quota piece over here. It, it It's sort of doing some of the predictive stuff. It's showing you how far out you are as opposed to having to manually perform some math. And, and um, so I think that's valuable. But I know that the predictive element will look at your past performance and like all AI, it needs to be trained a little bit first. But once it has been, it's actually going to say, you know, hey, you close at this rate and you've got this money in this buckets and you traditionally close deals at this point. So you're going to end up likely in in this area with your, your final totals. And I think that's a huge benefit 
to companies if they're going to use that. But it does come with the, to your point, sales insights, which is an, a slightly extra additional cost, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Although it does have other advantages than just this um, okay. predictive aspect. Um, and then I believe we also noticed that you can do snapshots, right. which is kind of unheard of. Anybody who's a traditional old school CRM, um, dynamic CRM person yeah. uh, knows that one of the challenges that you've had is that you can't look at where your pipeline was last week, last month, last year, because Dynamics out of the box doesn't have any kind of um, shadow tables or snapshots that it takes. Right. But um, but the but the uh, forecast functionality does have the ability to do that. Such a and it's request. automated, so that's nice. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Somebody doesn't have request. to come in here and take a screenshot or anything. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And we, we, because we hear it so much, we see, we often see those like shadow tables being created to grab every transaction of every change and everything like that, so that they can do just that. So it's pretty cool that they build it in. So, so I think I'm hearing this is probably a pretty worthwhile feature. Um, mm -hmm. It's worth the effort to set it up. And and you asked the question earlier, Paige, um, offline. You know how much, not how much, but you know, is it really? The amount of time does it doesn't take that much time to set all this up it is an it, upfront investment for sure but when i pose the question you know is it worth setting it up you're like well it's not it's not that much work to get it stood up and once it is it doesn't require a ton of maintenance other than uploading some new quotas based on your timeline so mm -hmm. probably worth the effort to get it stood up and ready to go yeah absolutely sounds I, good i can see that uh for people who are not comfortable in this sort of business analysis space um, where it could be a little trickier for them to grasp understanding, even based on our own discussions around this. Um, I do like that Microsoft has included little info bubbles for us mm -hmm. so that we know what is used to create that number. You know, it just shows you the formulas there. Um, but, you know, some of these are very unfamiliar and i think one thing that's confusing especially with that pipeline coverage ratio is at the end of the day it's really a percentage but it's right. shown as a decimal whereas in the stages and the spark graphs those are actually presented as percentages yeah so i think microsoft could probably tighten that up a little bit to make it a more consistent, less confusing for some users. I don't know. It took some time to get my head around that, what what it was and kind of how to play around with like, well, what does 0.24 even mean? And and once we once we figured it out, it made a lot of sense, right? It's your here's your total committed best case and pipeline. And you want that to be as high as possible because we all know you don't sell everything you're selling. You you hope to, but you're probably not going to. So you want to load those up as much as you can. Yep. And this figure effectively is saying you need to sell 24% of those three things combined to reach your, your gap. And that to me, when we finally got that language hammered out, that was kind of the light bulb moment or the, the pot yeah. of gold moment, right? Of like, right, that makes sense to me. So we want we want this number as low as possible because that means we have so much in the pipeline that we just have to sell a fraction of it to get yeah. to our goal, which is great. Yeah. But even this, to your point, this throws me off. This this threw me for a loop as well because this is gap to quota. So it's our total quota, so 200,000, less the amount that we've won, so 96. It says we've, we've still got 103, and I, I get it after looking at it enough and makes sense, but to me, it feels like this should be a negative number. Like it should be in brackets to say, you've still got this much to go. And when you when you reach it, it'll be zero and then when you surpass it it'll be in the plus i don't know that took me some time to get my head around i think uh when patrick said it was accounting math that helped yes <laughs> yeah you know debits credits yeah right. which is positive which is negative you exactly know, accountants they live in that world yeah and you know a lot of business users do too i suppose but nice well, Our, these system customizers we just don't live in that world it's that's right <laughs> Fair enough. 
All right. Well, that that I think that covers the topic quite well. I mean, that's uh, there's definitely some benefits. Like I said, I was kind of on the fence. I think even just in the, the duration of our conversation here, I'm, I think I'm a little more sold on it. It it does give us some advantages for sure. It, one of the things we didn't touch on is this little show us table and you can flip back to your board view. I like I love this board view. Um, quick, nice, clean, easy to look at. It's a little weird on my screen right now, but if you have multiple things, you, know, you can flip through and see which one and jump in. And I love the concept of, hey, we've got this massive gap to quota. We need to load more into the pipeline for that person and and give them a, a better chance to succeed. So lots of great stuff yeah. here available. Sounds good. Well, thanks everybody for watching. We hope you found this useful and informative. And uh, until next time, we will see you uh, on another episode of Insights with C5 Insight. Then we come back to you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. See ya.